Breakfast is sponsored by Gillette, the best a man can get. What's going on, everybody? I'm Jenna Wolf. That is Chris Carter. This is Nick Wright. I'm dapping it up like I've known these guys for years. It's, you know, it's the way it is. Good morning, Ms. Wolf. How's everyone doing? Jenna Wolf doing Jenna things. Absolutely. <laughs> Jenna doing Jenna things. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag everybody. Yes. Jenna doing Jenna things. Around 1030 last night, I heard something. It was like a tremble. It was like a scream. I didn't know what it was. I assumed, rightfully so, LeBron did something amazing because this guy all the way up on 100 and a million street was super excited about I LeBron not being LeBron. My exact cross did you out see how I did that? Did you see how I did say. that? Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> uh, it was. It was a hell of a finish to a hell of a basketball game. Did you watch the game at the Red Rooster? I did not watch the oh, I, I didn't do that. Yeah, because he lives close to there. I okay. did not do that, ladies and gentlemen. Just hang out there if you want him. If you want to beef with Nick Wright, <laughs> some hot takes. Some hot takes. Some hot takes, some beef, some good food, some good drinks. See you at Red Rooster Saturday around 1 in the morning. Well, that. What, what happened, Jenna, last night? Do you want to talk about it? Man, that's... Yeah. yeah. Let's get into it. Let us get into it. You know, they called... It's our duty. They called Game Fives pivotal for a reason. Last night, Game Five between the LeBrons and the Pacers was pivotal. And that wasn't a mistake. It was literally LeBron versus Indiana last night. Shy of calling the actual game, he did basically everything else. 44 points and the quintessential highlight of the playoffs thus far. End of the game, LeBron blocking Victor Oladipo's potential go-ahead. Some would call it goaltending. And then the buzzer-feeding three-pointer for the win. And a little bit of the crowd erupting in euphoria. Here he is after the game. Just give me the ball. <laughs> give me the ball. They had a foul to give. So I wanted to go quick so they couldn't give up that foul because we had no more timeouts. So I was able to turn and get to my spot. It's like deja vu for a regular season game we had versus Minnesota where I got a block on the other end and then a game winner, but that team never stops. That team never stops, and uh, it's going to be a tough one on Friday. All right, so one of the things that, not that there's many, but that you could find to, to knock LeBron on is that he hasn't always been clutch through the years. Has LeBron put an end to that notion, CC, that he's just not a clutch player? Well, because of the, the only reason why people would ever want to mention that would happen to be one series, maybe a couple games against the Dallas Mavericks. For, for those fans of the NBA would say LeBron was not himself. But to say that he was never clutch, you, you can't have the type of resume. That, that, that he has and not be clutch. And, and there's more things to being clutch than to making shots. You know, great players, they're going to make shots at the end. But as all, if you look at all the great stats of the great finishers, that being Jordan, that being Kobe and people like that, their stats at the end of these games as far as knocking down shots, they're not great. But they all have the guts to be able to take them. To be clutch is also, to be able to deliver a pass, to be able to set a pick, to be able to come up with a steal, potential block. Like, all these things lead to being a clutch player. It's not about can he just hit the shot at the end? Can he make free throws at the end? It's the totality of it. You can't go to seven straight M NBA finals, eight in total, potentially nine after this year, and not be a clutch player. So it's impossible for, 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 for that narrative to be true. Now, in the Dallas, did LeBron have one of those marks on his career that, no, we won't let it go. We will acknowledge it. But to say that he's not clutch because of that and all the things he's done since then, uh, to me, that's nonsense. So everything you said about what being clutch is, is accurate. It is not always hitting the game-winning shot. Sometimes being clutch is being so good through the first three quarters of the game that it is not in question in the fourth quarter of the game. Sometimes being clutch is hitting Kyle Korver open for a three. Sometimes being clutch is having a block to save game seven of the NBA Finals. But the way we traditionally view it yes. is what he did last night. 100%. And so I'm glad he had that moment last night because the guy that everyone considers the most clutch player in NBA history, LeBron now has more playoff game winners than Michael Jordan, six to five, and more playoff buzzer beaters than Michael Jordan, four to three. But this notion that he needed to prove it, I'm going to try in less than 90 seconds to give America a quick history lesson. In 2007, a 22-year-old LeBron James facing a team that went to six straight Eastern Conference Finals scored 25 straight points to beat the Detroit Pistons and propel that team to the NBA Finals. In 2008, 
23-year-old LeBron James against the team that would go on to win the championship, the Big Three in Boston, put up 45-5-6 and six in Game 7 of a playoff series. In 2009, 24-year-old LeBron James not only hit almost the identical shot to beat the Orlando Magic, but in that series averaged 39-8-8. Eight, and eight. In 2012, LeBron James in the biggest game of his career, Game 6 in Boston, 45-15-5 and five to end the Celtics run and keep that Miami Heat team together. In 2013, Game 7 of the NBA Finals, 37-12 and 12 and the game-clinching jump shot. And then, of course, in 2016, Games 5, 6, and 7, when he went 41-16-7, and 41-8-11, and then in Game 7 of the Finals against the greatest team ever, a triple-double, the game-saving block, and the game-clinching free throw. The idea that all of that happened, and yet there was still questions, is he clutch, is laughably absurd. But there still were, mm -hmm. so he will just continue, since his cement, as CeCe would put it, is still wet, he will continue to erect what will be the most lasting legacy of any basketball player we have ever seen. Uh, no doubt, and but I think what you said earlier is true. Most people think clutch is the last two seconds, one shot. Mm -hmm. It's going to one guy. It's make it, or or you lose the game. And he definitely stepped up. Let's talk about last night's game, though. What, what did that do to the team? We 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 talk about this all the time. You want them to rely on LeBron to get it all done, or do you want to get everyone else involved? Nobody else was really involved last night. Again, he was sensational. Yeah, LeBron didn't want to score 40 points. That's never been a goal of his. At any level that he's played at, it's, it's never been. But with the lack of firepower, the lack of continuity, the lack of guys making wide open shots, this is what he's got to do. Man, we, we would, we'd like to see the LeBron at 28, 12, and 9. Okay. That, that's, what, that's where he prefers to be. But because of a lack of another number two, let's look at all the other superstar players around the league and look at the best player that they have as their number two. Okay. It's totally lopsided. Like Kevin Love is a shell of himself. If he's the second, I mean, he's not even qualified to be a Batman right now. He's um, or not even qualified to be a Robin. Yeah, a Robin right now. He's Absolutely. Alfred at best. Yes. He's man in the cave, right. making sure all the technology and everything. Is, I mean, that is all he's doing right now. So when you look at LeBron, uh, this team and the lack of it being a great team is forcing LeBron to play like that. So for me, that's what I, I talked about it yesterday. I wanted to see LeBron take over the game early. And with him getting 20 points in the first half, I think he had 20 yes. in the first half, that's clutch in itself. When you're 2-2 two to two, going against the Pacers and the rest of your team can't score, you put 20 points on them the first because he put them in a position where he could be clutch at the end. It was the only reason. Listen, LeBron had 20 points on 82% shooting in the first half. The rest of his team had 27 points on 33% shooting. It was the only reason they were in position for the big four, third quarter and then to hold on in the fourth. CeCe's point about going down the list of other playoff teams, Harden has Chris Paul. Steph has Durant, or Durant has Steph, depending on how you want to look at it. And one of them's gone. They then have Klay Thompson. Russ has Paul George. Lillard had C.J. McCollum when they were still in it. Anthony Davis had DeMarcus Cousins. Then he has Drew Holiday. Wall has Beal. De DeRozan has yeah, Lowry. Right. All of those guys are playing better than Kevin Love has played this postseason. And the, so the, is this the way LeBron wants to have to play? No. Is this what is best for the Cavs? Obviously, clearly not. But it's the only option they have. And the other, to me, cool thing about last night, is for people that have been trying to find ways to tear away at this almost, it would be an unimpeachable legacy except for the Dallas series. A legacy that has one black mark and then 14 other years of excellence. Yeah, but every it. career has that. Sure. Jordan has that. It, a couple of those. The, but people see it, they have a little blind spot as far course. as looking at that. And so, but so people that are, their blind spot is all they can see, being the Dallas series. <laughs> this year we've heard, we've heard a new narrative surrounding LeBron. Well, listen, guy can't hit free throws, he's lazy on defense, and I still don't think he's clutch. So let's just look at last night. 15 out of 15 yeah. from the free throw line. Lazy on defense, oh, okay. So he played 42 minutes, and with four seconds left, he pins Victor Oladipo against the backboard. And then as far as clutch goes, in the most basic traditional definition, hit a shot that we shoot in our driveway, as LeBron said. Three, two, one, put it up.
And what did he do? Bottoms. In a game that if they lose that game, oh my goodness. We are asked, here's the question if they lose that game. Was that LeBron James' last game ever in Cleveland as a Cav? Yep. That's the discussion if they lose that game. That's what was on the line. And he answered the call as he almost And if they lose has. that game, I really have to give out your address because then I got to have <laughs> right? all the people come see you to resurrect you from this. <laughs> right. All right, we have seven the seconds actual left. Number. Who's the best player, Michael Jordan or LeBron James? Just kidding. Coming up, <laughs> the Browns are on the clock. The draft is finally upon us. He are lives they in a big, a big brownstone in are Harlem. Are they I'll about the to make Baker Mayfield the number one thing? Hey, chill out, stuff. man. Uh, you know, chill out. 13 hours, in Brooklyn. 19 minutes. I couldn't do the math. I got you, Jim.